Hi, my name is Carrie Wilhite and I am your Miss Iowa Superstar and today we will be reading For the Love of Autumn. When Danielle saw Autumn for the very first time, she held that tiny kitten in the palm of her hand. She marveled at how perfect and small that creature was and Danielle named her Autumn because it was almost Halloween. It was love at first sight. You poor little thing, you look like you haven't eaten for quite a while, Danielle said as she gave her warm milk and a bit of food. And then Danielle made a special little bed for her to sleep in. She set out water and kibble and a litter box, and Danielle looked forward to coming home so she could hold and pet Autumn. And as each day passed, she loved that kitten more and more. And soon Autumn was scurrying around the apartment. She tipped over the trash and pulled the laundry out of the hamper, knocked all of the pencils and papers off the desk, and jumped out at Danielle's ankles as she walked by. Danielle was a student teacher, and when she came home from school and tried to correct her students' papers, Autumn would lie right in the middle of them. And after dinner, Danielle would pop corn, and then they'd just sit on the sofa together and watch TV. And at that time, Autumn would curl up in Danielle's arms and purr and purr and purr until they both drifted off to sleep. One day, as Danielle opened up her mail, she squealed with delight. Oh, Autumn, I got a teaching job in Port Townsend, Washington. I've always wanted to live by the sea, and Port Townsend is right by the sea. When Danielle packed for the move, Autumn hid in the packing boxes, and she wrestled with the packing shreds and pounced on the bubble rack, popping as she landed on it. Danielle and Autumn drove together all the way up to the coast of California, through Oregon and into the state of Washington. And finally, they came over the little crest of a tall hill, and there it was, the beautiful little village right next to the sea and the school had arranged for Danielle to rent a lovely cottage right by the bay. An enchanted cottage, she thought, when she saw it. Autumn loved her new little house, and the very first thing she did was disappear right up the chimney. And when the kitten finally came down, she was covered in soot and ashes. Autumn helped Danielle unpack. She got inside every paper bag that hit the floor, jumping over every box and emptying and almost knocked over a stack of Danielle's favorite china. And that first evening, Autumn and Danielle sat around the sofa, eating popcorn and looking out the window at the sea as the warm fire crackled in the fireplace. Danielle loved her new school and adored each and every one of her students. Miss Parks, they asked her one day, are you married? No, not yet, but someday, when the, just the right man comes along, I will be. How do you know he'll be the one, one of the children asked. I'll hear the sounds of thunder, smell jasmine, and the wind will blow his hair, and I'll know that he is exactly the one. Oh, Miss Parks, do you think he's out there somewhere? Little Mac Mary Proctor asked. Indeed, I do. I can just feel it, Miss Parks answered wishfully. And yes, Danielle Parks loved her students, and she loved her little cottage almost as much. She planted, planted a cottage garden, and she pulled weeds and fertilized the lawn and trimmed the hedges. She even painted the wonderful old terrace. As for Autumn, she loved the place. She raced about the garden, stalked butterflies in the flower beds, climbed the apple trees, and even perched herself atop the trellis as she watched the birds in the new bird bath. And both of them settled into their new life in the little cottage by the sea. But one afternoon, when Danielle got home from school, a terrible storm was raging, and there was thunder, and the sky was black, and the raindrops, big as bumblebees, hit the roof with a pinging sound. And Autumn didn't greet Danielle at the door like she usually did. Danielle searched the house, but couldn't find Autumn anywhere, and she called the next door neighbors to see if they had seen her. Oh, she's probably hiding out somewhere from this fierce storm, her neighbor reassured her. But Danielle was worried. Late that night, Danielle heard a scratching sound at the door, and she opened it, and it was Autumn! She was soaking wet, and her tail had a huge gash in it. It was bleeding. Danielle reached for her, but Autumn shrank from her touch and ran into the night. Danielle ran after her. She walked around the neighborhood in driving rain, calling, Autumn! Autumn! But Autumn didn't come. She had completely disappeared. And when Danielle left for school that next morning, she left the back door ajar and hoped that Autumn would come home. And now all day at school, her students noticed something was wrong. Miss Parks, where do you think Autumn could be? Jimmy Ross asked after Danielle told the class why she was so worried. I think all of us should come to Miss Parks after school today and look for Autumn, Jerome Bolton announced. Caleb Dirks stepped up. Yeah, some of us can take the beach 
You guys can look up into the woods on the hill and you girls stop at every house to see if anybody has seen her. And the children were true to their word. They all came to Mrs. Park's cottage and they launched a search that would shame the FBI, but alas, there was no autumn to be found. Days stretched into weeks. Danielle cried almost every night just thinking of autumn. And there had been rumors that a mountain lion had been seen and her cottage was very near a state park where one had been sighted. Danielle feared the very worst. She walked around the little cottage and cried whenever she looked at anything that was Autumn's. She picked up Autumn's empty little bed and ran her hands over it. She looked at Autumn's paws prints, still on the windowsill. She didn't even pop popcorn anymore, nor sit and watch the sea by the fire. Danielle's heart was broken. Finally, Danielle put away Autumn's food and water bowls. She took all of her toys and put them in a bin in the laundry room. She couldn't even bear to put Autumn's bed away. And she couldn't bear to brush Autumn's fur off her sofa cushions. And Danielle ached from the loss of the heartbeat of her little cottage. Because to her, that's what Autumn was. On Saturday, Danielle and her students planted a small bed of flowers where Autumn used to lie in the shade of an apple tree. And the students had polished rocks and placed them in a circle on the ground. We'll always call this Autumn's Garden, Benny Barber whispered softly. I think she would have loved that, Miss Park said wistfully. And just as the children were about to leave, there was a small sound and something jumped out of the trellis into Mrs. Park's arms. It was Autumn! Autumn, Danielle cried as she hugged her. Where have you been? And the children surrounded them and gave them a giant group hug. You've been gone for six whole weeks. But Miss Parks, she doesn't look like she's in the woods. Look. Her fur is shiny and clean. She looks nice and healthy, Betty Barber noticed, and her tail, Danielle said as she examined it. There was a horrible gash on it the night she ran off. It looks like it had been shaved and some stitches taken in. Someone had taken wonderful care of Autumn. Autumn stuck close to home for the next week until one day she left again, only to return the following weekend wearing a flea collar. Oh, well, for goodness sakes, who put this flea collar on you? Danielle wondered as she took it off. I have a collar for you, sweetie. Pink, your favorite color. And then one day, Autumn went away again and came back two days later with a phone number scrawled on the collar. Children, Danielle announced in the class this morning, someone has put their phone number on my cat's collar. Wow, they all exclaimed. We have a real mystery on our hands, Johnny Carter said. And he thought for a moment, someone must think that Autumn is their cat. Well, she's my cat, Danielle asserted. Miss Parks, you have to call that number. You have to tell the person that she is your cat, Benny Barber insisted. And that evening, Danielle paced the floor. She wasn't accustomed to calling someone who she'd never met before, but Autumn circled the phone and kept looking up as if she wanted her to call. Well, here goes, Danielle said as she dialed the number. And a voice answered the phone. Yes, Danielle started. Uh, well, my cat seems to have your phone number on her collar. Oh, thank God you found Stormy, the voice sounded relieved. I've been so worried. Stormy, her name isn't Stormy. Her name is Autumn. Danielle felt her face, face flush. Oh no, I named her Stormy because she came to my house on a terrible stormy night, badly injured. Her tail had been slashed, probably a mountain lion. No, sir, you don't understand. I've had Autumn since she was a kitten. She disappeared on a stormy night from my house. She's my cat. Well, if she was so precious to you, then why was she out in such a terrible storm? Danielle hung up quickly. What nerve, she shouted. What a rude man. When she told her class about the phone hall, call, they were all intrigued, and they spent the whole afternoon doing drawings of what they imagined the rude man looked like. And that afternoon, Autumn came into the house with a note attached to her collar. And when Danielle opened it, it simply read, Please accept my apologies. I didn't mean to be rude. And Danielle sat, quickly sat and wrote a note back. I apologize as well. Perhaps I was rude too. And she attached the note to Autumn's collar and sent her out the door. Two afternoons later, Autumn came back with another note attached. Since we both care so deeply for this little ki kitty, perhaps we can share her. I live alone and truly adore her company. And when Danielle shared the most recent note with her class, all of them decided that she needed to invite the note writer over to her house so she could meet him. 
Oh, children, I'm not in the habit of inviting a perfect stranger into my home. But Miss Parks, he's obviously a lonely man and can't be a bad person if he helped Autumn. Could he? Benny Barber said. All right. I'm going to ask him to stop by this Saturday, she said. Oh, oh, can we meet him too? Her class pleaded. We want to meet him. Miss Park agreed. And that afternoon, the children helped her compose the invitation. Saturday was a dark and rainy day but every kid in Danielle's class was at her house by early afternoon. All of them had their faces pasted to the front window to see what he would look like when he came to the door. Every time a car drove up, the children would shriek with delight only to sigh when the car passed by. And finally, when it looked like he wasn't really coming and they had turned away, there was a knock at the door. Autumn ran to the door as Miss Parks opened it and there was a clap of thunder. The wind came up and blew the trellis so that the jasmine vine unraveled and a clump of it fell into his hands and then another gust blew into his hair. But Miss Parks, I'm Stephen Naughton. I think we have a wonderful little cat. Autumn sprang into his arms and purred and purred and purred. Danielle beamed as she gazed into his face. And this little cat is the heartbeat of my house, Mr. Naughton said softly as he caressed Autumn. And a clap of thunder echoed over the bay and the window caught the jasmine vine and scattered blossoms everywhere. Why, her students whispered to one another, Miss Parks had found the very one, and Autumn had found them both. Stephen Naughton and Danielle Parks were married by next spring. They shared not only the enchanted cottage by the sea, but walks on the beach, evening by the fire, eating popcorn, and most of all, their love of Autumn. And that was For the Love of Autumn. I hope everybody enjoyed listening to this book because I enjoyed reading it. I miss my two little kitties at home so much while being at college. I hope everybody is still staying safe and healthy and I will see you next Wednesday with another book. Bye!